Good morning, this is Tyler Crone with the Thundering 36. We are so delighted to be interviewing our citywide city council candidate, Sonatina Sanchez. Welcome to the 36. Over to you to introduce yourself. Thank you, Sonatina, for being with us. Hello, my name is Sonatina Sanchez, and I am so excited to be here and run for city council position eight. Uh, I grew up in Holly Park, Kingway Apartments and Yesler Terrace. And uh, I used to walk to for preschool and kindergarten. Uh, then I was one of the bust kids uh, who went to John Hay and John Rogers uh, in the North End. And so the love I have for Seattle really does extend from South to North and uh, including all of the cultural things. Uh, I came back to college, uh, Seattle for college. Uh, I moved down to California briefly. Well, my dad moved us down to California briefly. Uh, and uh, I studied at Seattle University and Seattle Central Community College. And what, as soon as I came back, I became a dedicated organizer in the community. Uh, in that time, I've worked a lot with transit and biking issues. And in that uh, work, I've developed a real passion for right-sizing our infrastructure and creating communities that want to live and participate in the business of our city. Uh, I really value listening to everyone and uplifting the concerns of those who struggle to navigate the complex systems that our city government is made of, that our general government is made of. And uh, one of the reasons is because I was raised uh, by a functionally illiterate mom who needed a lot of support in order to get uh, services and I became a bit of a translator in that work in my childhood. And so I learned very young how to navigate the systems and I developed a lot of ideas and uh, theories that I've been putting to practice over the last 20 years in Seattle in order to make the world a little bit of an easier place for those who uh, struggle to navigate it. Currently I sit on the board of Community Roots Housing uh, as the resident representative and I have been involved in the League of Women Voters of Seattle King County, Black Lives Memorial Garden, uh, the Transit Riders Union, founding the Bus and Transit Service Committee, and uh, on Paving Paradise was uh, one of the founding, uh, I was one of the founding members of that pea patch. Uh, and I am so excited to uh, run for office once again and be able to bring the passion and uh, experience that I've developed over my adult a life uh, for Seattle. Thank you. Thank you. Laura Marie will ask our first question. Hi, um, if you're elected to which standing committees of the city council will you seek appointment and what special qualifications do you bring to the ongoing work of those committees? Transportation, housing and human services, land use, parks, public utilities and technology, and public safety. So uh, all of these five are uh, to me intertwined as is all of the business of the government and the special abilities I bring to each um, revolve around the work I've been doing. So in transportation, as I said, I was in, I'm involved in the Transit Riders Union and I have regular meetings with Sound Transit, King County Metro, the Amalgamated Transit Union, uh, the Seattle Department of Transportation, Washington Department of Transportation, Port of Seattle. And so I already have a lot of connections within the departments uh, because of this work through the Transit Writers Union. So that alone brings a lot of experience and special qualifications. Housing and Human Services. As I said, I also sit on the board of Community Roots Housing and I have uh, been working in human services as in a volunteer and somewhat of a work capacity for most of the last 20 years. I did a work study job at Treehouse for Kids. And uh, that started me in like the nonprofit social service world. And so I bring a lot of experience again, um, having also worked with DESC during lockdown uh, and uh, have a lot of connections in that way. Land use, I also have sat on the design review guidelines uh, update in 2017 for Capitol Hill. So I've been able to get into the minutia of all of the uh, things that affect both private developers, public developers, residents, and uh, the people who just live under the infrastructure. So that is a great qualification of mine. 
Parks Public Utilities and Technology. Um, starting from the end, I used to be a software tester. So I have a lot of uh, experience being able to talk technology and uh, get really good um, uh, results from the teams because they know how to talk, they know I talk to them. For public utilities, uh, I live in Seattle, I guess. That's a fun one, I know, because um, basically I have a lot of um, experience uh, navigating like working with the public utilities in terms of just being a resident. Parks is one of the things that I'm actually really passionate let's about. Let's wrap up this question. Sorry about that. Unpaving <laughs> paradise. Um, and then public safety. Um, I have a lot of experience with emergency management, especially. Thank you so much. Our next question will be asked by Alex W. Yeah, hi there. Uh, what steps will you take to ensure that the city remains safe for all, including Black, Indigenous, and LGBTQ plus people? while keeping police accountable to elected leadership and community? Uh, the primary thing to me is to bring those impacted by these issues into my office to lead on the efforts um, on these fronts. Nothing about us without us is a message from the disability justice movement that I've been a part of um, with my autistic advocacy. And uh, it has rightly been taken up by all the groups mentioned Black, Indigenous, and LGBTQ people. I belong to two of those groups. Um, I am a queer person with Indigenous uh, heritage to the land uh, known as Turtle Island. And I believe that we need to make sure that we're listening to the most vulnerable of our community. And in terms of keeping uh, accountable to the city, having regular town halls is one of the things that I think is really uh, important. So having um, a schedule uh, to meet with each district on a regular basis and having a consistent presence from the office to the communities, I think is going to be the best way to make sure that I am living up to the job. Thank you so much. The next prepared question will be asked by Barbara. Thank you. How would you ensure that the city has an up updated climate action plan and what specific actions would you prioritize to get us back on the track to meeting Seattle's Green New Deal goals? Automobiles make up about 70 to 80 percent of our carbon emissions. So when we build and invest in car infrastructure, we support or desire to drill for oil. Even an electric car, uses rubber tires and a lot of plastic parts. So to me, getting our transportation and uh, public land use uh, in alignment with our climate goals is the best way to ensure that we are making progress on a climate action plan. That's also one of the ways that I would be focusing on updating the climate action plan is making sure that we have legitimate steps behind the uh, problems that we find. What is it that we are trying to change about our city? And in that plan, what are the mechanisms that we can use under the power of the city to change those things? Thank you so much. Our next and final prepared question before we go to follow-ups is from Jeremy. The, the city has been in a homelessness state of emergency since 2015, yet our homelessness crisis has not receded. What are we doing wrong and what steps will you take to address the crisis? Punishment instead of support has been the prevailing uh, policy, it seems, of the last few administrations. And to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense because having done direct support in my community, especially um, this past year, uh, I was supporting the Black Lives Memorial Garden. And when that was destroyed in Cal Anderson Park, um, the homeless community that uh, was um, being supported by the gardeners moved out into Nagel uh, near the park. And basically every day or uh, multiple times a week, the encampment would be destroyed. All of the stuff that the neighbors brought bought to support it would be thrown away and uh, we would have to start all over again. And so we're wasting resources, not only of the city, but also of private individuals who are trying to make an impact. I know personally, four to five people who were able to get into housing 
from the support of our group because their caseworkers were able to find them. A lot of times when we get uh, encampment evictions, uh, the caseworkers can't find their clients because it's hard to keep a phone or phone charged or any kind of connection to the community that we're supporting you. So I think that having regular sanitation services, that alone would make a big impact on the way that the neighborhoods uh, perceive homeless encampments because they are necessary at this time during our housing crisis. So as long as, as much as we can support them, as opposed to punish people, that I think will change uh, the way that we will get at the homelessness crisis. Thank you so much. We will now go to our eboard members raising their hand and asking you follow-ups. We'll try to keep those um, closer to one minute answers just so that everybody has a chance to pose their question to you. Thank you. Dawn? Um, what are your plans to utilize and incentivize the 1 billion housing levy funds to increase affordable housing in the city? Is, could that be written down? Don, why don't you put it in the chat and we'll go to Jeremy's question because it is a little bit of a complicated one. Jeremy, do you want to ask your question and we'll take Don's in just a second. So Jeremy, why don't you ask your question and if Don, if you could write the elements of it in the chat. Um, so I, I appreciated hearing a lot in the answer about the, um, about the Green New Deal, um, uh, qu question about, uh, transportation. Of course, I know that when the, a lot of these plans hit reality, we end up with a lot of, you know, neighborhood opposition or opposition from other stakeholders who may be currently using roads that need to be addressed. How would you work with, um, with um with um some some people who may not be initially excited about these plans to move them forward i have uh developed my organizing career in seattle uh through bike advocacy especially and since i started in uh, about 2001 uh, many people who may be longtime residents of seattle remember how lacking of our bike infrastructure there was at that time. I would often go into meetings with Seattle Department of Transportation uh, with hostile engineers who said, you know, we couldn't put in a bike lane because everybody wanted parking. A lot of what our groups did were go into the neighborhoods and the, specifically the businesses, and we would do surveys of people and say, how did you get here? When we showed results to the businesses, they realized that it was less than 20% usually people came by car and the people who uh, walked and biked often spent more and they came more regularly. So once the business owners realized that they weren't going to lose business and they may in indeed increase business, they started to request bike racks outside of their businesses. And once the city started to see how the business community and the neighborhood were starting to request all of these facilities, we started to see more movement on that area. And now we do have a, an extensive bike plan and we are still working on getting more of that. So I think it is about connecting both the interests of the community where the infrastructure is being suggested, showing and helping them understand why this may be actually better. Uh, there's also proven that when a community is designed for walkers and people who wheel around, that is actually better for people who drive because you don't have as much conflict and less people are driving. So you have less traffic ahead of you. So these are the kinds of things that I'd like to come in and do educational uh, uh, events to make, mm -hmm. to hear the concerns and then address them with real world solutions. Thank you so much. We're going to go back to Dawn's first question, and that is in the chat. What are your plans to utilize and incentivize the $1 billion housing levy funds to increase affordable housing in the city? So I will, yeah, I'll put it right back here so you can see it as you answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I am uh, a big supporter of I-137. I love going out and tabling next to them, and we, you know, support each other. It, well, I tell them to go vote or go sign the I-137 form. And so um, I think that focusing on social housing 
is going to be the way that we get out of housing crisis. Uh, I have studied a lot about urban policy design around the world. Vienna is a really great example. Uh, they, um, the city itself owns over half of the housing stock. And so because of that, they uh, don't have a, an incentive to gouge their residents because they want people who work in the city to live in the city. And so I think that, especially sitting on the board of community roots housing, the ability for somebody to stay stable and for the uh, develop the management company to actually help a person stay in their home, help stabilize the community um, as well as the person, and that leads to uh, more uh, better results. So my plans to utilize and incentivize the one billion dollar housing uh, is to uh, push for more social housing. And again, show the communities that will be uh, accepting them into their neighborhoods how good it can be. Thank you. I'm going to go to Alex next. And then, Dawn, if there's time permitting, I saw that you have a second question. Alex? Thank you. I want to move to talk about a different levy. Uh, what are your thoughts on the current proposal for the levy to move Seattle? Uh, how would you change it? Uh, when? What would you like to see done with those funds? The move Seattle levy? I'm sorry, um, could you write that down the question? That was another complicated one. Uh, yes, I can write it down. Thank you. Um, so why don't we try to do a brief answer to this? It's a, it's a big question here, but it's already written down. Let me try to put it. Transit stations, locations have been passionately debated. This one, let me put it back up. Don, can you put it back up in the chat? So oh, that, I see it. Okay. Why don't we go um, to that one first and try to keep the answer as tight as you can, and then we'll go to Alex. Thank you, Sonatina. Absolutely, yes. Uh, I am going to try and push for rail in every possible community. I, as I said, I depended on transit growing up. My mom couldn't read and therefore she couldn't drive. And so I know what it is like to live very disconnected. I meet regularly with transit officials to push these things. And one of my big policy goals is to make sure that riders are able to sit on the boards for the transit agencies to influence these decisions more directly. Thank you so much. And then let's see, Alex's question is in the chat. So we'll give you a moment to take a look at that and then answer when you're prepared. Well, the move Seattle levy is a disappointment from transit perspective. Again, it puts way too much emphasis on car infrastructure and uh, doesn't take into account, um, especially the missing sidewalks in our community. Uh, I was talking uh, with some people in District 5 on Friday and uh, mentioning how basically the north, the very north end and the very south end of Seattle are the most lacking in sidewalk infrastructure. And it doesn't seem like it's a priority for anybody who currently is in charge of the budget, mostly because it seems like they drive. So again, this is about coming back to nothing without us, nothing about us without us and getting more people who don't drive into the decision-making positions around how we use this funding. Thank you, Stephanie. I had seen your hand before. Do you want to ask your question? We have probably about one minute left. If you wanted to come in, Stephanie. Sure. It it partly got addressed in Jeremy's, but um, I was just curious if you have other aspects of um, uh, tackling the climate crisis outside of transportation. Are there other areas that you would want to focus on to help uh, help um, kind of improve Seattle's impacts on the climate? Actually, yeah, uh, I would really like to help develop the industrial manufacturing capacity of Seattle. I think it's a really uh, overlooked aspect of our interconnected world and being able to have more of a manufacturing base in the city will not only help our climate because we won't have to do so much importing, but it'll also help our economic engine because we'll be able to hire uh, more workers in Seattle and again, leading to living wages for more people living in Seattle and the virtuous cycle that that uh, will hopefully create. Thank you so much. This concludes the formal end of our interview. We'll wait to close the recording.